Okay. So once again, good morning to all. Let's start our session without any further delay. Let me share my screen. Yes. Okay, all set. Okay. Hello, so, good morning. Good morning, good morning. So I hope my screen is visible to everyone, right? Yes. Good. <clears throat> all right, let me see who all are missing still. Smith not showing. Okay, no problem. We can start. So I hope last week we have done discussion a lot of about the component of the SD band. We discussed about uh, solution of the SD band, some advantage, disadvantage of the SD band, right? Key feature of the SD band. And additionally, we try to use a use case like uh, what is the benefits uh, over the SD band and like what is the drawback over the legacy band technologies, right? So we have done discussion those all things in the last classes. So in addition of that, also we explore everything about the controllers, like uh, what are the controllers and why you use the controllers, like we having a different, different controllers, you guys can see here, like the we want, we manage and the we smart. And uh, in addition of that, we try to understand about the CH functionality and the VH functionality, which is going to use on the data plane devices, right? and how they are going to make our life easy by like compared to the normal router scenario. Right. So I can see people are talking. So how this is going to be make a control connection between the edge devices to the controllers and controller between the controller, how the routing is going to be used. So I believe everything we have done discussion in the past classes, about all theoretical, but today what we are going to do that is a more interesting because in SD WAN uh, we should know the theoretical concept, but more of the things we should know that is a practical thing, right? So if you don't know the practical, you don't know the run, you don't know how to run the commands, you don't know how to troubleshoot, how to the configure, and how we can see the live protocols behavior. So that is not going to make your life easy and comfortable while learning the SD WAN technology. So first of the things, whenever you get the you know lab access, might be you will have such kind of the URL. So uh, you'll get such kind of the public URL, rack.gwanit.com. Some port number. So you just have to put your username and password, right? So after putting your username and password, likewise I can put here my username and password. So you'll get some interface where you'll find might be the lab, which is March lab, right? So this lab is going to be used for the, your lab. So you just have to open this lab and after opening this lab, you'll get the interface of the lab. What I'm going to explain throughout the session. So this kind of the interface might be you're going to get. And after getting this kind of the interface, you just have to start from scratch the configuration. This lab doesn't have any single configuration right so this lab is completely empty no single line configuration is available so entire configuration of lab we will have to do together so i'll demonstrate while doing the configuration and you guys have to do by your own right so when i start doing this lab so we also having some lab guides right so how basically let's suppose every command you cannot recall and like write in your notepad or your mind so what i have done basically prepared such kind of the lab guides by using those lab guides, you can easily configure the, you know, all the configuration of the devices. So I'm going to explain a step by step how it is going to happen. So <clears throat> this is my local lab. So I can use it locally because it's a little bit uh, uh, good for me because I keep using, but for you guys for remotely, you just have to use a URL, what I just explained. So this URL you just have to use. So everyone will get the separate URL, right? To just access this lab. And username and password will be the also separate. So before I start the class, right? Uh, as usual, I would like to understand from you all. In last previous classes, whatever we have done in the last two classes, anyone having any question on those classes, right? About the concept, about the theory, about the idea of the SD-WAN, 
anything if you like to discuss just let me know i will happy to explain you again so at least i i'll be happy like you all are the same page and you having the basic understanding of the sd band key feature of the sd band why we should use let me start the recording as well uh, i just forget the recording so okay so anyone uh, having anything sir uh, we didn't get uh, recording last uh, you didn't get the uh, sd band recording last two class yes sir uh, really sorry for that uh, uh, let me check probably it should be there uh, but uh, let me check uh, why you not get the last two class recording okay anyhow last two class recordings uh, are available on the youtube channel but never mind uh, uh, i will share definitely i last someone to share right away after this class okay anyone else having anything who not received that you know recording and all so probably is this is third class or uh... this is something uh, two class we have done the introduction about the sd wan one class last one we have done uh, architecture view why sd wan and why we need to use sd wan in compared to the legacy wan so those comparison and the basic fundamental of sd wan we have done discussion so this is yes we can say is second it, class is it available on youtube is it available on the youtube yes so let me just uh, see here on the youtube uh, that was the two live class so let me say to you or everyone last two class we have done live back to back so let me check the date so that date was 25th or 26th right so let me see 25th and 26th so two week ago as event lock extension okay so this could be the one class uh, this could be the one class let me just see this let me see okay yeah this two could be the live class yeah this two could be live class let me try to share in chat so everyone can get that view so this is one class additionally i'm going to share the recordings no worry but i'm just assuming yes these are the because less than the two hours so these are the last two class we have done yeah so i just shared last two class detail on the sd wan which happened in the live so you guys can watch all right guys so anything else we can have a discussion ali yes, you want to ask something yes, yeah tell me sir actually in real time uh, in traditional networking here mm -hmm. uh, we uh, sorry edge device to edge devices uh, something mm -hmm. site one to site uh, to branch one branch two mm -hmm. like that here we are creating tunnels right dm vpn tunnels right mm -hmm. in this also mm -hmm. in sd wan also Uh, we want to, to create a tunnel like this yeah so that's really good question yeah you, your question is really valid so let me uh, explain a little bit that so so what was happening in the legacy van so if you're talking about the legacy van so you just give an example about dm vpn right so d uh, it's a tunneling protocol based solution likewise the vpn for which we use the ipsec plus gri also we can implement so this was the ipsec and gri that they make the vpn flavor we having a lot of vpn flavor available in the market to enhance those vpn solution what was the happen they there's some kind of the solution which known as a dm vpn so the idea was like let's suppose one of the my hub location so all the spoke sites are going to make a tunnel via this hub location and they want to communicate then they can go either via the hub to spoke or might be the spoke to spoke they having a different different uh, phases available in the dm vpn and by using that phases and concept they can build the tunnel between the hub and spoke but your data communication might be going to have Open between the spoke to spoke, so they are basically none. They are basically uh, nothing but uh, GRE over IPsec tunnel. GRE plus IPsec, you can write here. 
सॉरी जीआरई ओवर आईपीसेक you can write gre over ip sec that tunnel is going to build similar in the sd wan we having the multiple edge routers right different different locations might be you can just think about this this is your wan infra could be the mpls could be the internet so different different sites are going to connected so let's suppose this is edge 1 for the br1 similar we having a br2 we having a br3 and we having a br4 so those branches are going to build again a ipsec tunnel pure ipsec tunnel between the all branches so again the concept is going to remain same so you can say every branch is going to build a ipsec tunnel with another branch so this is also going to build this branch okay so it's a full mass concept so this br1 having a three tunnel this is a first tunnel this is second tunnel this is a third tunnel because they are building the tunnel similarly this branch is also having a three tunnel 3 2 1 having a 1 2 and 3 so this is a full mass full mass ipsec tunnel that is going to build between the all the sites so we'll understand bit more why it is going to required the full mass ipsec tunnel or it is a default behavior we can change this behavior so these all things we are going to understand in this sd wan syllabus so definitely we'll get the answer whatever we are going to uh, understand in upcoming classes right <clears throat> sir is it, yes. sir is it possible one side we have configured ipsec and on, on the other side we have configured uh, gre no so uh, see uh, sumit so gr having a different requirement and ipsec having a different requirement so let me just little bit give you an idea what is a gr and what is ipsec so at least you guys can understand so this cannot be work like one side you are configuring the gr another side is ipsec so oh, why i making all these mistakes ipsec this this kind of the like uh, uh, interconnection is not possible right why not possible let's try to understand what is gre and why is ipsec so the idea was ipsec is most like powerful encryption protocols they give you the confidentiality confidentiality data integrity like whatever the data you are sending between the two locations that all are going to be in form of the encrypted so nobody going to hack those data so sec security is going to maintain by the ipsec so the security parameter is going to be maintained by the ipsec so this was the like ipsec concept right so ipsec is going to maintain the security but this ipsec having one problem and gre is like no security if you are using the gre that doesn't having a, well, this is your one branch location this is the branch one and this is the branch two right and you having the internet connection this is the internet and you are building the ipsec tunnel over that inter internet so this ipsec if suppose it's a gre your lan traffic can be exchanged between these two branches over the gre tunnel but these are the not secure communication not secure communication so this is one problem so you can send the traffic but it can be hacked it can be manipulated it can be you know uh, snipped so this could be the problem but if you are going to use the same time as ipsec this is the highly secure and whatever the communication you are doing between these two branches nobody going going to understand those communication but one problem is there in gre one problem is there in the ipsec gre is the very flexible protocols you can run any routing protocols if you are wanted to run the bgp under the gre ospf under the gre you are want to run the esgrp under the gre right rip under the gre it can be possible but problem is that it is not secure so it's a very flexible but not secure at the same time ipsec is very secure but not flexible not flexible that means you can only run the unicast routing like with the static route you can just configure you cannot run the bgp ospf uh, eigrp and rip in the ipsec that is the main problem so it's like very secure but not flexible uh let me mute you guys
Uh, I can see a lot of noise is there. So yeah, so it's a very secure, but not flexible. GRE is the very flexible, but not a secure. So these were two having a problem. So to mitigate these two problem, what was the concept was done? Make the GRE over IPsec. So once this two come together, what we have? We achieve the security plus flexibility. Both we having now. So now if you're using GRE over IPsec, that means you can run the BGP, OSPF, EIGRP, RIP all together. And additionally, you can use the security. So this is how the idea was coming in a picture. So always you have seen whenever you use the GRE, GRE never is going to be used the, for the plain communication. It always use the IPsec. And that's why it's become the very powerful. So IPsec and GRE cannot be configured to end differently together. They always come together. Or either we just have to go with GRE, GRE or IPsec, IPsec. Make sense, Sumit? Yes, sir. Got it. Sir, here we are having IPsec, right? IPsec uh, tunneling is there, mm -hmm. branch to branch connectivity. Mm -hmm. Then why we need MPLS, lease line, this kind of thing? Because directly we'll go to the uh, direct internet also. Uh, that's a good, nice question. Okay, so ca can we get some more time to just make it understand? Okay, let me just make you understand, no problem. So we having a two concept. <clears throat> we having a two concept that we known as the underlay overlay. I hope you guys heard about that, right? So what is underlay and what is overlay? So any of the tunneling protocols, what am I writing? Like the IPsec, like with the GRE, likewise the DMVPN, likewise the LIPS, LIPS, yeah, it was right, LIPS, VXLAN, what else? You might be heard about the TLS. DTLS might be heard about the OMP, a lot of things we have, right? These all protocols are known as the tunneling protocols. Tunneling protocols. And these are known as the overlay. Right? So whatever the tunneling protocols we have, they all are known as the overlay, right? So if we talk about the overlay, that means we also same time having a good understanding about the underlay because overlay cannot run without the underlay. You just have to take this in your mind. Overlay cannot be formed without the underlay. Likewise, in the example, you want to build a very good highway from Delhi to Mumbai, right? And you want to make the, your traffic should be very smooth. You want to run the vehicles around 200 kilo like kilometer per hours like that or 150 or 100 so you cannot build such kind of the infrastructure such kind of the overlay or such kind of the road which are the so so fast right it cannot going to hang on the air right it should be something you just have to make some base you just have to like uh, put some kind of the you know foundation right Likewise, you just have to create some kind of the road, which are like not too much good, right? It is like, uh, you just have to put a lot of uh, materials on that. After putting a lot of materials, you just make them very smooth and a lot of uh, civil work is going to happen and then the road is going to be completed. So before making the any road is very good condition, you just have to do a lot of work to make them at least basic foundation, basic connectivity so that you can build a road. Similar kind is going to happen in the any tunneling protocol concept that is overlay or underlay. If we're going to build overlay or underlay connectivity between the any of the site, <clears throat> what the first thing you just have to take care in mind. Let's just suppose these are the sites. This is the, again one of the router, which is my one location. This is the another router, branch one, two location. And this is another router that is a branch three location. They are connected with a different, different ISP. Might be this is the Airtel, right? This is the Vodafone. They are connected in this way or might be through this way. So if you want to build any of the tunneling protocols, 
like the ipsec right you must have to build something basic ip connectivity that what is that basic ip connectivity so what is the basic ip connectivity so basic ip connectivity this is the first requirement to build any tunneling protocol your this side of the public ip address pip address or this side of the public ip address because always the ip say connection or any of the tunneling protocols over the internet build over the public ip address so whatever the public ip address you have it should be reachable it should be reachable if you are not able to reach from this public ip to this public ip address you cannot build any ip sec gra dmvpn lips vxlan tls dtls omp whatever you want it is not going to build so basic ip connectivity should be there once you having the basic ip connectivity then you can try to build overlay so how the basic ip connectivity is going to build so basic ip connectivity how it is going to build it can be built via using the static route right you can build by using the static route you just have to configure the static route the next stop is the isp isp is going to build via this way or you might be run the bgp you just run the dynamic routing protocol or might be run the mpls so these are the routing protocols based on these routing protocol you can make the basic ip connectivity so at least you can reach from one point to another point to just build the underlay so once you have the basic ip reachability you can build the very good overlay tunnels on that so alim is it make sense for you so you just have to make the ip basic reachability that's why the bgp is static and the mpl is still is going to be required okay you you got it sure. all right <clears throat> we want to take <clears throat> mpls also right yeah, yeah anything okay. we having we having this lab we also having the same see mpls internet both having we have so in real time MPLS. also okay okay there are, yeah okay. real time also also real time also it is going to happen in the same way real time also it is going to happen in the same way whatever the concept i am teaching here so without any further delay uh, i hope i able to clarify a few of the questions which is the very basics and it is required that's why i keep asking please ask your question because foundation should be very clear to everyone before going to learn any deep dive of the new next generation technologies right so let's understand so the first thing whenever you get the lab right we just have to understand what is a lab and how it is going to be used right so first thing i uh, explain about the logging method so i hope you'll understand if you face any challenges just let us know uh, support team will definitely help you out right they will guide you how it is going to be happen so there is not any problem but if in this lab you can see that in this lab we having the various kind of the routers one is the edge router one is the ch router this is the vh this is the vh this is the vh two routers and also we having another vh5 so total we having a one two three four five sites are available there and all five sites having a different different lan connection right and they are also having the wan connection so if i am saying the lan connection these are the lan connection which is just behind the routers right and the wan connection this is the wan connection one of the internet one is the mpls right so these are the wan connection so every router you can see dual transport we have this router also dual transport we have this router also dual transport we have and this router also dual transport we have except this side this side also having a single transport that is mpls so this is the purpose fully we designed this lab because we just have to test a lot of features a lot of parameter how it is going to be configured across the fabric so these are the van so we having a two van one is the internet one is the mpls one is the like yes internet mpls and addition of in addition of that also we having one of the section that is known as a control planes right so as i mentioned in sd wan fabric we having one of the plane that is known as a control plane and in this control plane it can be deployed this control plane can be deployed in cloud infrastructures in general 99% case you'll find cloud infrastructure only it could be hosted any of the cloud infrastructures might be the azure might be the azure or might be the aws might be the gcp might be the alibaba any of the cloud whatever you have it is going to be deployed so these controllers can be deployed in the cloud premises or it could be in the physical server so in likewise in my lab these are in the physical server i have a server which is a very powerful server 
And in that powerful server, I have deployed the EVNG and then I deployed these controllers. So it could be equally possible where you can deploy this all in the cloud or it could be deploy on the your uh, on premises. So, right, so server can be used, ESXi, KVM, these all can be used. There is not any problem. Sorry for asking, EXI yeah. and our KVM. <laughs> these are the virtualization platform where we can deploy the you know server. So ESXi is like my lab is deploying the ESXi platform. So ESXi is a server. It's a VMware server. VMware server. So VMware metal server again needs some operating system. Na? In my server also we are, it's a VMware metal server. But on that VMware metal server we just have to run ESXi as a hypervisor or a software on which we can run the applications. Bare metal, you can install the any kind of the Linux based operating system that is a CentOS, uh, ESXi. Uh, we having other operating system also available, but most popular is the ESXi, which I am running right now. Okay, so even on the bare metal, you just need to run any hypervisor who can do the virtualization, who can do the you know hosting of their applications. Got it. Okay, so Alim, you uh, able to understand? No, sir, I didn't understand. You didn't understand, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, no worry. So this is something, uh, this is a virtualization concept. Virtualization, that means, what is a virtualization? Let's just suppose you having one of the big server. Let's suppose you buy one of the server, right? This is a physical server. Or might be you buy one of the computer, right? So that computer can be acting as a server. So computer is one of the hardware, right? So this hardware having the, might be the one terabyte storage, right? That is your database can be stored. Similar, you can put one TB, one TB RAM. So it's a very powerful and it's having a third one, the very powerful processor. Processor is very powerful. So according to that, you're having very good storage. You, you could having the very good RAM and also having the very good processor. So if you want to build a 10 PC inside of one your one PC, is it possible or not? Is it possible? You can run the EVNG, you can install the EVNG and you can connect the 10 PCs inside of that. So they all PC are acting as a virtual PC inside of your computer. I mean, the big computers. So again, your, your computer acting as a virtual server. So similar is going to happen. You need to buy one of the physical server. If you, want, if you want to use this kind of the controller deployments, you can need to buy the physical server. After buying the physical server, you just have to host the images there. And after hosting those images, you just have to use those hosting for your lab purpose. So that, that hosting is going to happen based on the hypervisor. Hypervisor is like, you just have to understand it's like a system or mechanism where on the one of the operating system, you can run another operating system where we can run that your specific application. These are the part of the CCNP slavers. So if you don't know even the hypervisor is what and all, so you, if you get a time to just understand, so if you go in the CCNP, in course labels, you'll find that there is a very good topic where I just explain each and everything about the hypervisor and all. So you at least, at least understand what is the VM, how the VM machine is going to work, how is the virtual switch. So those things are going to be covered in the here. So the virtualization, one of the chapter we have. In this chapter, we just have to understand what is a hypervisor type one and two, virtual machine and virtual. So once you understand this topic, probably you'll get all answers, Sir, but as yes. A, as a AWS and Azure and Google Cloud are providing the cloud services, uh, Azure is, is, is there also in a market? Is Azure, right? Services. You're talking about the Azure, right? No, sir. As AWS or Azure providing cloud servicing and mm -hmm. VMware also provide the, this kind of services. VMware cloud did they have an SX cloud, but I'm not sure how much they are in cloud provider uh, department, but as they are dealing with the private cloud solutions, but public cloud, I'm not sure because I never heard too much about the VMware, but 
yes because right now every company having some some kind of the cloud you know platform and vm air is like one of the core things which is dealing in the cloud infrastructure developing the product so i hope so they have but i'm not sure about I that okay i was reading their articles exi vm air so that's why i'm i noted there is a some services mm that's their right. services are definitely going to be used by the all service providers but i'm not sure they are also cloud provider or not right okay so got it sir okay so what we have to do in this particular lab let's just start already we have done 30 minutes discussion so in this lab we just have to bring the first controllers right so how the controller is going to build so this controller is going to build based on the like uh, whatever the ip connectivity we have so you can see one of the pc we have this pc is keep getting ip address from the local lan machine and also a uh, means local network whatever the internal infrastructure of the guinet from there this pc is going to automatic get ip address but on this interface we just have to assign the ip address might be the 10 ip address and one of the ip address dot 1 from 192.168.10.1 we need to assign on this interface that is a v manage for the out of band management so we can get access of the v manage first from this pc then we just have to connect this particular we manage with a switch that is a data center switch and this switch having the different different connected with the system ip or might be the physical ip of this interface for the v bond similar we having system ip and physical ip address of the v bond v smart and then root ca so we'll discuss every uh, product uh, configuration in very detail and what is the use of the root ca because we already know about the what is a v manage what is a v bond and v smart everything we understand in the v edge also but root ca we didn't touch just still okay so we'll discuss about more sir, but let me just sorry here hello sorry yes sorry sir there is a control switch and we have deployed in a separate vlan v manage v bond v smart which we keep in a, a single vlan and when we mm. push this data to the internet or mpls so in the interface we will zero one and uh, on that side we will configure the inter vlan no 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 wait 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 let me just come wait 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 we'll get the answer okay just wait for some time okay so first what do we have to do we just have to start the lab okay so if i start the lab my lab will be started so you can start the lab from here you just select the all you can start the lab or you can just select here one by one you can start the lab so see my lab is getting started once the lab is going to be started all devices color will be changed so right now they are grayed out but you can say now some other devices start becoming the green 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 okay since uh, some are different color also purple kind of the things so just wait for few minutes all the devices is going to be start once the devices will going to start we we'll start doing the configuration okay so still controllers are not started fully only this device is started this pc is started still my v manage v smart v smart now is started so probably v manage is also going to start so almost every device is started and v manage also is started so now my all devices has been started so the first thing as i mentioned that none of the configuration is available so the first configuration we have to do on this pc this pc we just have to assign the ip address on this interface because this pc doesn't having any ip address why you need to assign the ip address because from this pc from this pc we need to ping the ip address which is going to be assigned on this particular v manage interface that is ethernet 1 so let me just start the pc so if i start so the pc is a v manage and v bond and base smart uh is it deepak right yes 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 so probably we cover in very detail in the last class okay so just watch the recording okay, okay. very detailed discussion we have done yeah so we'll get the answer okay if i okay. start then it is going to take lot of time okay <sighs> so let me just pankaj sir so this uh, pc is connected with your uh, server right Yes, it is an internal GUINET network where this PC is connected over the virtual cloud machine, and they are and automatically the get the cloud machine. The VMware's and the V bond images are there. Just think, right? they are this 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 is connected with one of the routers. So router directly connected on this cloud. So next hope is a router. This this machine. This machine next hope is a router. So here we just having one of the router. 
but this is connected through the virtualization is you are right that is a vmware and nic card and everything from the virtual switch so this is a router you can say guinet router right and this router having some lan ip address here and again this router having the wan ip address here wan ip address so wan lan and then finally this for this point of p, uh, pc point of view this is the acting as a wan but actually it is lan of the guinet right but this router having the actual public ip address which is going toward the internet circuit so now once you open the pc your pc password is 123 you guys can note it down your pc password is 123 so you just have to put password in this pc is 123 okay so once you done your pc is going to be open so once your pc will be open what next first thing you just have to verify i am getting ip address for this particular interface or not so how can i check that So if you go in the CMD, it should get an IP address automatically because this PC also requires the internet connection. So let me just check. Without internet, uh, some of the things we cannot test. So if I am going here, IP config. So see this interface. Oh, this some of the interface already getting the IP address. Mm -hmm. Which lab I open? Let me just check it. Did I open the right lab or wrong lab? Let me just check it. I should open the Mars lab, right? Yeah, Mars one, right? Let me check what is happening here. Okay, there is some error. Let me just fix it. Let me just check this one first. What is happening on this one? Okay, so they somehow they having some kind of. Let me just wipe this all nodes. They having some kind of the configuration. I don't want to use any configuration. So I can wipe these nodes. So this configuration is going to be fully erased. Let me just wipe it. None of the configuration is going to be used, or I can wipe all node. So I can wipe all of node. So if there is a legacy configuration, they are going to be all removed. I don't know. Somehow exported, and there is some kind of the configuration. So let me just open this PC again. Checking, yeah, it is initializing. Okay, so let me just log in it. One, two, three. Username and password. Username is OVI. Password is one, two, three. I can adjust the display setting. Let me adjust it.
Okay, so I'll go it again and I will just try to check again the IP address. And now should not be IP address, anything except the Ethernet one. So you guys can run and you can see this is the IP address, which is the assign on this interface. Let me just show you. So it, local area connection two having the one of the IP address. So two is just, this is one, zero is one and this is two. So two is this one. So two having this IP address automatically they have taken from this cloud, but one is something no IP address. It's a PIPA IP address, right? So there is no IP address on the Ethernet one connections. We just have to assign the IP address. So how the IP address can be assigned? This IP address should be 192.168.10.10. So how it is going to happen? So I need to go on the network, right? Properties. After going in this property, I just go in the adapter and this is a two, two, we know two is equal to one, zero is equal to one. So two is equal to this ethernet one and this there is no name that means the ethernet zero. So I just click on this one and I just go in the property. And uh, if you click on the IP, you just have to assign the IP statically. So you just have to give the IP address 192. 168 10.10 .10. subnet mask should be this one and you can put the gateway 192 168 10.1 right so this is the gateway no other information this only you just have to put after that you just need to close and now if you go in the cmd again and if you run this command ip config you'll find this interface also having the ip address which i just configured that is a local area connection but if I try to ping dot one IP address, which is just going to be configured on the vManage, it should be not reachable for time being. We'll test it because still the vManage is not configured. So the, my PC task has been done for time being. I have done this PC configuration. No other configuration is going to require except the assigning the IP address of this interface. Right? So this PC configuration, just one configuration. Now we just have to go on the vManage. vManage, we just have to click. We just have to click double. So once you click the double, you will get the one of the pop-up and in your case, it is going to open in the, that window, uh, HTML window. I will show how it is going to open. And now here you just have to put username as an admin. So your username and password should be admin and admin. So you just have to use admin, username and admin password. This you just have to put here. So let me just do that. I will just go. Admin and this is the Viptela image 90.2.3. That is the latest one you are using. Latest one is still 20 series, but uh, we can say quite latest because 20 is like in production and we are doing the lab almost just you know uh, one of the uh, previous version of the 20. So after that, I'll use the password as admin. So once I use the password, it is going to ask me, you must have to change the password. So you can put any of the password. I will just put again admin. So I will put again admin. So by default, username was admin, password as admin, and I put re password as again admin. So no need to any complexity. Once you've done this one, it is going to ask available is storage of the device, VDB and HDC, which storage you want to use for this particular vManage. So definitely 3GB is not going to end up. So we just have to use the 100GB for the storage for this vManage. So we just have to use this one. If you select two, then the three GB is storage is going to be assigned for this vManage. That is not good. So I'll go and select the one here. And after selecting this one, this hundred GB of a storage of this vManage is going to be assigned because the storage is must for the vManage because they have to store the logs. They have to use, store the user credential. They have to store the configuration file, iOS image, a lot of information they have to store. So at least minimum hundred GB of storage is must required for the vManage, right? So I'll use, okay. Now it is asking, would you like to format this particular drive because you are going to use, but you want to format. So you should say yes, because I want to make completely free and there's no existing file should be there. So I'll press okay. So this is going to format the drive. And once the drive is going to be formatted, you will be ready with the vManage. So just wait for a few seconds. Let them complete the formatting process.
it will take some time to complete the process of the formatting then we'll get the again login prompt so just have to wait no other choice we have So now my format has been completed and we again having the login prompt here. So what we have to do now, we just have to enter the again username and password that is admin and admin to just continue the login process. So I'll go here and I'll try to put admin and the password will be the admin. And it is saying that system initialization is happening and you just have to wait. So you just have to wait. You will get one of the pop-up pop message. Your system is ready. So you can see this time we'll get the message system is ready. Uh, ready. So earlier it was showing the initializing stage. So what I have to do, I just have to go again here and I just have to type admin and again admin. And now we are good. So there is no other step is going to be required steps is going to require to further do the processing about the booting and uh, assigning the any kind of the hardware space or formatting and stuff so everything has been done and this is this step only going to happen with this we manage right we want we smart and we edges not required this steps because they having a default space available in their memory but we manage we just have to use because they having a dual space one is a 3 gb and 100 gb so they ask us select which you want to use so what is the next so the next one if i click on the v manage if i try to run so run we having some kind of default configuration you guys can see here we having some default configuration we having a system configuration we having the username some operators net admin some passwords loggings and vpn zero and VPN 512. So we don't know still what is VPN 0, VPN 512, and what is the configuration. So the first thing, this is the default configuration. Whenever you purchase any of the boxes, you will get some kind of default configuration, like with the Cisco router and Cisco switches. Once you purchase the Cisco switches and router, you just having some kind of default configuration. Similar in the vManage, also we have some kind of default configuration. So what next? The next stage we have to assign ip address on this interface so that this pc can reach out this interface right so before i go and assign the ip address we just have to understand one concept that is the vpn concept in the cisco sd -WAN. so vpn is like virtual private network i hope you are aware and it is similar to VRF, right? In this particular SDN, similar to the VRF. So virtual routing forwarding. So what that means the VRF and what that means the VPN. So we'll try to understand these all things in detail. So you can see by default, we having a two VPNs. One Sir, is VPN. with the help of VPN, we are creating tunnels, right? GRE, RDM, VPN, this kind of tunnels. Uh, Yes, you can say without uh, VPNs, uh, we cannot create the tunnels because uh, creating a tunnel VPNs are going to be required. Yes, it is correct. So we'll see how it is going to happen, right? So you can see by default, we having a VPN 0 and VPN 512. So what is VPN 0 and what is VPN 512? So and uh, what is other VPNs? So total in this particular SD-WAN, we having a part of three VPNs, right? Let me just write here. We having a VPN zero. We having the VPN five and two, and we having a VPN which is start from one to five one one comma five one three to 
six five. Uh, the exact range is. Let me show you exact range. Hmm. Let me just show you. So this is the exact range. Six five five to seven. Five to seven. So this is the range. So we having a three VPNs. One is VPN zero. One is VPN five one two. And is a VPN five one one. One to five one one and five one three two six five five two seven. So VPN zero always known as a transport VPN. This known as a transport VPN. VPN five one two is known as the. Or you can just write M and M. MGMT management VPN. You can just write it here in short. And this one is known as the service VPN. So I hope it's clear. This is service VPN. So we having a three VPNs. One is the transport VPN. One is the management VPN. One is service VPN. This is the first thing you just have to take it, note it down, okay? Because this is going to ask in the interview also. Now we just have to understand what is a VPN, what is a VRF. So VPN is nothing; it is equal to VRF. Likewise, the VRF, what is going to happen? If you are creating the VRF A, if you are creating the VRF B, if you are creating the VRF C, so whatever the routing table of the VRF A that is not going to visible with the routing table of the VRF B, similar the routing table of the VRF C is not going to visible with the routing A or B, right? So, in concept of the routing, uh, like VRF, if we having one of the router by default, one routing table is there. Routing table is there. That routing table is known as the global routing table. We known as the global routing table. But when we want to split this routing table in the multiple routing tables, so we just have to use the concept of the VRF. So what is going to happen? Let's just suppose I want to split this routing table as it is. So might be this one will be my global routing table, but this one will be the one of the VRF A. This could be the VRF B. This could be the VRF C, and this could be the VRF D. So different different routing table we have. By using the different different routing table, whatever we are going to go, whatever uh, we want to segregate our routing table, that is absolutely possible. The so same thing, same concept is going to happen in the SD WAN. But in SD WAN, we having a three VRF, uh, means the three concept of the v VRF. That is a VPN zero, VPN five one two, and VPN five one, VPN one two five one one two five one three two six five uh, five two seven. So in this again, this is the acting as a VRF. So whatever the route under the VPN zero, that is not going to exchange in the VPN five one two, and whatever the route under the VPN one or five, this this VPN having a lot of large range. So you can create whatever the VPNs. They are not going to exchange the routing between the different VPNs, right? So this is what we just have to understand about the VPNs. One more thing, you just have to understand about the VPN. This transport VPN always going to use. When you do for WAN interface config, right? So if you want to configure any of the WAN interface, means the ISP side interface, you just have to use the VPN zero. This is for the pure management, pure management interface configuration. So no need to worry about that management interface configuration. Then this is whenever you want to do the LAN configuration. LAN side config can be done by using VPN or you can say service VPN. Service VPN range, you know that what we having a service VPN range. So if you want to do the service VPN configuration, you just have to use this particular range. So this range is going to happen in the your service VPN. So you can write it down. Clear. So now, which VPN I select out of this? Because I want to just manage this vManage from this PC for the management purpose. So which VPN shall I select? Anyone can guess out of three? VPN zero. 
No, no, I'm, I'm just talking about. I just want to manage this. We manage. I just want to use to. What else? Service VPN means uh, five one uh, double one two. This range, sir. Uh, no five one three. Five one two for management. Yes. So more precise, the five one two VPN is for the management. So I'm talking like we just have to take the management access of this. We manage. So we just have to use the VPN that is a 512. Under this 512 VPN, we just have to configure this interface because any of the interface you cannot configure directly. You cannot assign the IP address directly on the interfaces. So if you want to configure any of the interfaces, you must have to use the VPNs first, right? Either VPN 0, VPN 512, VPN 511, 1 to 511, or whatever the range we have. But without, if I go here and try to give any of the IP address, let me just go here. If I want to go and I want to go like interface, see this command is not going to work. Interface, this interface I want to configure, ETH1. This is not going to work for me because this kind of syntax, it is not going to tech. So you cannot assign any IP address directly to the any of the VH, CH, VBond, VSmart interface. To assigning the IP address, you just have to go either of this VPN first. So I have to go in the VPN. Might be I, I'm just trying to do the management configuration. So VPN 512. So if I am in the VPN 512 and now I am writing the interface, see this command is taking. Similar, if I am going in the VPN 0 and if I am writing the command interface, see it is taking. So whatever the interface ID you can give. Similarly, if I am going in the VPN, likewise the 511 or VPN 1. VPN 10, this is a part of the service VPN. So VPN 10, and if I'm typing the interface, it is taking. So any of the interface configuration, if you want to do that, always going to happen on the VPNs, not directly on the interface. So what I have to do, <coughs> I have to go on the interface that is a 512 interface. That is VPN, the 512 VPN interface. Why I have to go 512 VPN interface? Because I just want to manage this particular we manage from the, from this PC. So here I go the configuration and I'll type 512. And now I'll just use the interface. What is my interface ID? So I have just write actually ETH1. So I just use ETH1. And then I need to assign the IP address. So what is the IP address of this interface? So IP address would be 192. 192.168.10. Yeah, 192.168. 10.1 slash 24. So you just no need to give any subnet mask. It will always take in this format IP address, no subnet mask. So subnet mask always going to take in the slash notations, CIDR format. And then you just have to put no shut. So this configuration has been done. But even you've done this configuration, you just have to use one of the command that is a commit. If you not do commit, this configuration is not going to be you know, populated. So this configuration is not going to be populated. So you just have to commit it here. So once I've done the commit, my configuration has been done. So if I'm going to run the show run command again, you will see one of the IP address has been assigned on this particular interface that is known as the management IP address, right? Make sense? So now I have this PC, this PC having the IP address, this one, and this interface having IP address of this one. So let me check from this PC, am I able to ping this IP address? Or from this, uh, we, we manage, I'm able to ping this particular PC. So let me just first check with the PC. I'll go in the CMD and I'll try to ping the IP address 10.10. Let me just put 192.168.10.1. So The first packet was lost because they were doing the RF resolution, but finally we able to reach, right? So we able to ping. So I'm able to ping from this PC to this vManage. Similarly, from vManage to this PC, I need to ping. So how can I ping? So if you try to command a ping, and if you try to put the IP address dot 10, which is the PC IP address, it is not going to work. It is not going to work. And you can see you are getting one of the error. Ping is in the VPN zero. See, this is an important log you can see. And it's saying 
your ping is going in the VPN zero. So what that means, that means whenever you do the ping, default you are putting the ping and the IP address, it will always try to check under the VPN zero, whether this IP is configured or not, whether the routing is available or not for the destination, right? So always it will go by default in the VPN zero, but we are trying in the VPN five one two. That is a different VRF. So similar, we just have to use the VRF. Likewise, the global routing table, whatever you we ping any of the network without any VRF, so it will take the global routing table. Similarly, it is going to take the VPN zero. So we just have to use the ping, and then you just have to use the VPN five one two, and then we just have to give the IP address. So if I am pinging now, say ping is VPN 512, but the ping is not working. So ping is not working. That means there is an issue with the connectivity. The answer is no. The ping is not working because in this particular PC, we having the firewall defender enabled. So we just have to disable that. So how can we do that? Let me just go there. We just go in this firewall, right? After going this, you'll find this firewall properties. And here is the allow. 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 And just apply it. So your firewall defender was disabled somehow to ping one, and now it is enabled. And once it's done, you can see start this pinging. So now you having the full confirmation. This PC can able to reach this, and this is able to reach this. So both way the configuration we have done for the ping. So now we just done the ping. So what next? So what the next step is? We just have to take the GUI access of this particular vManage. So how can we take that? Ping is start working. So you just have to go in the browser. Let me just go any of the browsers. Like with the Chrome browser. And after going in the Chrome browser, you just have to do certain things. You just have to write. HTTPS, and you just have to put the IP address 192.168.10.1. Which IP address? Which is configured on this interface? The V manage management IP address. And once you just just click, sorry, what I made wrong. HTTPS, right? Is it correct? Dot 192. Dot dot dot. Yeah, dot was missing. Okay. And once you just put this enter. Uh, you will get some kind of the prompt. See this kind of the prompt you have uh, seeing on the in front of the PC. So what you have just to do, you just have to click on the advanced, proceed with on save. So I'll just click on the on save, and uh, after that, you will see some kind of the prompt. And this is the prompt of the Cisco V Manage, right? So now we just have to log in again with the credential that is the admin and admin. Whatever we have, so I'll just put admin and admin. So now we having the GUI access of the vManage. So this is the first lab you just have to do. Still, it is not fully functional. We just have to do a lot of things. But the first, how to take GUI access of the vManage? This is the first step you have to build. Assigning the IP address, make them reachability. Once your reachability is fine, you just have to take the GUI access. And this is how your V manage it looks like. And this V manage doesn't having any V smart, any V age, any V bound, and even this V manage is invalid license we have. So no information. It's a like kind of the GUI access, but it's a new baby. We just have to explore this new baby, and uh, we just have to do a lot of configuration on it. Okay. So what next? So we done with this setup, right? Now the next step is. We just have to make sure every controllers like V Bond, V Smart, and Root CA, whatever we have, they should be reachable to each other. Means I am sitting on the V Manage, I should reach to V Bond also. I should reach to the V Smart also and the Root CA also. If I am not able to reach either of these boxes, my fabric is control plane. Fabric is not going to build. So how this is going to be happen? So first thing, because these are the cloud-based, you know, application, and they might be hosted in a different different location. So to make them reachable, we just have to take care 
the interfaces which is going toward the isp should be connected to any common device or might be the multiple isp devices but they must have the reachability through the wan interface so this is the management right the controller doesn't having any kind of lan sites they don't have any lan connection because they are the controller user no need to sit there so only they should have the wan device wan connections so see these are the wan connections these are the wan connection these are the wan connection these are the wan connection this could be the wan connection so these are the wan connection so all the interfaces which are going to configure toward the wan that could be the vpn 0 right management 512 your wan is under the vpn 0 right so this management need to be uh, uh, like management configuration has been done this vpn 0 need to be configured so now how can be configured so you can see there is ip schema already defined here in this particular you can see this interface should having this ip address this interface should have this ip address this interface should have this ip address this this is a normal router so this having the special normal configuration for the wan interface no vpn connection is going to be required because this is a normal router but the controller should be the vpn 0 so first thing because this is my data center switch on this data center switch we having a different different isp terminating here one is the internet one is the mpls so we just have to do one thing we just have to configure one of the vlan on this particular data center and we want to make these all subnet in one vlan so they could be reachable to each other so i'll go in my data this is switch and is this is switch if i go on the config t and if i write the host name dc switch and under this this is switch what i have to do i just create one vlan that is a 1 2 3 and i can put the name controller vlan i can just put this name after doing this vlan configuration l2 vlan creation i'll create one interface vlan 1 2 3 and here i will assign the ip address this one 123 10.10.1 So let me just IP address one twenty three ten dot ten dot one two fifty five two fifty five two fifty five dot zero and no shut. So this has been done and do right. Ah, uh, before I do right, what ex? What else? So we created the SVI. We assign the IP address, but the ports which is going toward the controllers. On those ports, we just have to pass this VLAN. right so they having a, all are the same segment same network same vlans so we just have to use the command that is a interface range right and i'll just go on the gig 0 by 0 to 0 by 3 right this is my interface all should having the similar configuration so i just use the command switch port mode access switch port access vlan 123 and do right so this is what i have done so now these ports are part of the 123 vlans i created the svi on this particular switch so show ip interface brief let me show you this is the interface vlan and after you can see any of the port configuration so you will find some kind of the configuration see this port having this configuration if you go one port this one having this configuration if you go on the two this one will have this configuration and if you go on the three this one having this configuration so all ports having a similar configuration and we are okay so now i have done the dc side switch configuration no other con configuration is going to require now again going to the vmanage and we just have to configure which is toward the isp so they are under the vpn 0 right so what we have to do we just have to go on the we manage and here now for the vpn 0 we just have to go on the vpn 0 interface so let me see it's showing my internet is unstable let me check am i audible guys Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. There is some kind of the internet timeout. Yeah, sometimes some interruption is there. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm just checking that one also. Why interruption is happening? Let me check. Okay, so we just have to go in the VPN zero. After going in the VPN zero, <clears throat> what we have to do, basically, uh, we again have to go on the interface. Which interface? This time, Ethernet zero, right? So Ethernet zero, and after that, you just have to assign the IP address. That is one twenty three ten dot ten dot ten slash twenty four, and you just have to put no shut. So this is the command I have done, and you just have to do the commit. So now I have this interface configuration. If I just run so run, so you can see now this VPN zero having a uh, one of the interface, and this interface having this IP address, and this is connected to the switch. So if I try to ping. If I try to ping dot one, which is on the switch, it should be reachable. If I am not putting any VPN, that is going to VPN zero, and I want to check with VPN zero only. So my P manage is able to reach to this switch. So this switch SBI is able to ping over. The next step, I have to go on the V bound, and I need to configure this interface so this can also reach to the switch, and it, this can also reach to the V manage. So let me just go there. I can go in the V bound now. Here I'll go and I'll just use the admin. I'll go here. They use the admin. It is asking to change the password. I'll change the password. So one thing you just have to take your mind: V bond is nothing. This is the having the image of the V edge only. So this V bond image and this uh, V edge image are the same. It is not a different. So we having a dedicated image for the V manage. v is smart but the v bond is equal to v edge it is the same both are having the same image it is not going to be changed so v bond and the v image v uh, edge image all are all, always going to be same only the name is going to be changed so that's why once i log into the v bond you can see it is showing the v edge image name because they are the same only one command we just have to use by using those command this uh, v bond is going to be converted as a v uh, sorry v edge is going to be converted as a v edge so those command will use later so first let me change the host name so you guys can understand so host name always going to change by the system you have to go in the system and host name i can make as a v bond so now my If I do the commit, see the name has been changed as a V bond, but still it is a V edge image. Leave it. We we'll later discuss about more. So again, I have to go in the VPN zero. After going the VPN zero, I have to go in the interface. This is the interface GE zero by zero. So GE zero by zero, and I have to assign the IP address. This time one twenty three ten dot ten dot eleven slash twenty four, and no shut. Right, commit. So once I have done this, if I try to ping the switch now again, if I try to ping switch, see my switch is reachable, right? But at the same time, if I try to ping the V manage IP address, so it should be also reachable because your packet will come here and it will go here. So let me just check what is IP address ten. So if I try to ping ten, see this is also reachable. So your V bond is start talking to the V manage, right? And if you go in the V manage itself also if you try to ping this new ip address let me just check so if i am going here and if i try to ping the ip address of this 11 should be also reachable see it is pingable so mutual communication is started between the v manage and the v bond and life is good now the third controller we have that is a v smart so we just have to do the similar configuration no no need of the vpn 5 and 2 because uh, just for the v manage we just configured because for the management purpose to take the gui access here we no need to gui access we just have to make the reachability with the wan and uh, we'll get the gui access directly on this dashboard on this dashboard they will be available so everything can be done from here but v manage should be the dedicated gui even i not want to assign this management interface if i want to take the gui access through this ip address it is also possible but we just have to make lot of routing and every stuff so that is going to add a complexity 
So made and easy. So just taking the console locally, I just define this management interface. Else, definitely, if I want to take via this IP address, it is also possible. What I have to do, I just need to connect one of the PC here, and I give the similar range of the IP address. Once I start pinging this IP address, I can take the GUI access also. There is no problem. Okay, Ali. Okay. So the next thing I have to go on the vSmart. Be smart if I'm going, I just need to log in admin. I need to log in admin. I will ask again to change the password. I'll change it, the password. And you can see this is a vSmart by default name is coming because the image is showing as a vSmart. So again, I have to go here the configuration mode. And after going in the configuration, I have to go in the VPN zero. And then I have to go in the interface there is the ETH zero this time, right? And I just have to assign the IP address 123.10.10.12 slash 24. And just have to use no shutdown, right? And you just have to use the commit. So once we have done, so show run VPN zero if I'm doing this IP is assigned to this particular interface. And if I try to ping the another IP address of the v1 and v manage. You can see the switch is reachable. Then if I try to ping the v smart, the 11 IP address, it is reachable. If I try to pick dot 10, the v manage, it is reachable. So now these three controllers start talking to each other. So they're having the reachability. Now the third thing is the root CA. The last one is the root CA. So this is a normal router. And we just have to make the reachability likewise a normal connectivity. So let me just do that. So if I'm going here, I'll just put no. <clears throat> After putting no, say this is a normal router. So I can just go here and put the host name root CA. We'll discuss more about that. What is the root CA? And after putting this roots here, I just have to go in the interface Ethernet zero by zero because this is normal router, so no VPN concept is going to use. We can simply assign the IP address. So I just have to assign the IP address 123.10.10.13. And this time they will take the subnet mask, no not slash notation because the normal router and it'll make no shut and do right. No commit is going to be required. Now if I'm trying to ping from here, am I able to read the switch? Let me just check. Yes, which is reachable. What about the V smart? Yes, what about the V bond? Like V smart, V bond 11 is V bond, 12 is V smart. And what about the V managed? That 10, they all are reachable. So every device are reachable, there is no problem. So now we just make the basic IP connectivity between these our controllers. Anyone having any question why we have done and how we have done? Are all clear. It's a basic uh, CCNA level of the configuration we have done for the assigning the VLANs on the port on this page and assigning the IP address on these controllers, right? So what next? So ne ne the next thing is we just have to onboard these controllers. We just have to onboard these controllers. That means they just have to understand to each other. After understanding to each other, they just have to make them operational. So how it is going to happen? So now we just having a GUI access. That's make sense. After having a GUI access, we just have to do some other configuration of this particular vManage. And we just have to make this particular vManage live operational so they can onboard other controller also on this particular vManage. So how this is going to be happen? So this is a million dollar question. So the first thing we having the lab guides, we can start whenever you go to start that, you know, we manage configuration. We just have to follow some set of the configuration. Likewise, we just have to do. So I have done the configuration. I have done the configuration like with only the IP has been assigned, but few command still I didn't run on this, but we just have to understand why this command is going to require. 
in addition of that also we having some system configuration and some kind of the static routes so these all we just have to run in this we manage cli configuration which is right now not available which is missing right now right so how this is going to be happen so we just have to understand they see this just build the basic ip connectivity but in addition of that we just have to add some static route we just have to add some kind of additional command and the system configuration as well so first thing we just have to understand what is system configuration so if you want to onboard any of the devices if you want to onboard any of the devices in sd1 fabric one of the key configuration is very important one of the key configuration is very important first thing is you should having the basic ip connectivity so if we want to onboard this v1 on the v manage so this v1 should be reachable from the v manage this is the first thing which i make the connectivity right but in addition of that you should have define the configuration that is a system wise configuration you should have to define the configuration that is known as a system wise configuration so system wise configuration is one of the key things without system wise configuration like system configuration you cannot onboard any of the devices and this system configuration having the five tuple information and what are those five tuple information first device host name second you have to define the site id third you have to define the v bond detail right fourth you have to define the organization name org name right and fifth you have to define the system ip so these parameter must have to define on every of the controllers before you are going to onboard on the sd1 fabric if you are not defining these all parameters then your sd1 controller is not going to be onboarded right this you have to take care in your mind right so how this configuration is going to happen so first you have to go in the system right likewise if i am just wanted to configure in this v manage so how can i define so first i have to go in the system and after going in system we having the option of the host name we having a option of the site id we having option of the organization name we having ip I, uh, system ip and also we having the site uh, we want details right so we can define everything while going in the system configuration so this you just have to do now what else you just have to define the tunnel interface and allow services what is a tunnel interface so likewise uh, i i will really ali ask me ki to build any tunnel right we just use the vpns right yes it was the correct and without the vpns we cannot build the tunnels so if you are configuring the vpn 0 so by using the vpn 0 might be your router or your controller is going to build the control connections they are going to build the control connection and these control connection are based on the dtls that is your urp based tunnel and one is the tls that is based on the tcp tunnel so this is the like transport layer security and datagram transport layer security they are the both on the working on the layer 4 transport layer but they just using the two different protocols tdp uh, tcp and urp and by using this control connections they are going to make a secure communication between the two devices so let's suppose you having one of the v manage here and they want to communicate with the v smart they want to communicate with the v bond so before they communicating they just have to build the tunnels right even they don't want to communicate they just have to build the tunnels so how the tunnels is going to form based on the tls or dtls so if this tunnel need to be formed so you just have to allow this command tunnel interface you just have to define the transport that which going to be configured toward the isp this is your tunnel interface so your router will come to know this is my tunnel interface and i need to enable the additional tls and dtls services on this particular tunnel automatically no any configuration is going to required so that's why you just have to configure the tunnel interface so what i have to do i just have to go on the every routers likewise the v manage and after going in the v manage i just have to go on that particular interface 
that is a VPN zero. And I just make as a tunnel interface. So let me just go on the interface. That is the interface ETH. What is the interface? ETH zero. And after going, I'll just make a tunnel interface. Tunnel interface, and then allow service as well. Uh, let me just tunnel interface. Allow services all and the commit. So now my configuration has been done. We'll talk more about the static route later stage. It is still missing, but for timing, I just make as a tunnel interface and that's all. Similarly, you just have to go under your vbond and also you just have to go on the interface of the vbond. So let me just show, show run VPN zero. And this is the vbond and this is, you can see already tunnel interface, but few services are allowed, not all services are allowed. So what I'll do, I'll go in the VPN zero and I'll just go in the tunnel interface and allow services all. So if I not allow allow services all, might be my FTP services is not going to work. Might be the BGP services is not going to work. My OSPF is not going to work. Some of the feature is not going to work. So better you just allow everything because we are in the lab. So at least nothing is going to be blocked. Else we just have to specific allow the services. So we want to be done. Now, last one is the V. Can I ask you something? Yeah, yeah, please. Earlier you said, here we are using IPsec, right? Mm -hmm. A tunnel creation for the IPsec, right? Mm -hmm. One drawback also you said, sir. But the drawback is here we are uh, static routing only we are using. What, what? Uh, earlier you said in the mm -hmm. GRE, plain text is there, but here we are having the allow all services, BGP, e, OSPF, everything. But mm -hmm. in this IPsec, only we are using static routing. You said, I think so. we are allowing the services, but we are not enabling the BGP. We are just allowing the services, but we are not enabling the BGP. You got what I mean? No, sir. Actually, uh, in IPsec, we didn't use this kind of uh, these services, BGP and OSPF. I completely agree. So we are not using the BGP OSPF here. We are just using the services. Means we are just enabling that services. If we want to use the BGP, we can enable. So still we are not enabling. I'm just saying we are just enabling all the feature. If required, we can use it. But IPsec definitely it is going to build the base on the like uh, whatever the parameters available in the devices, predefined algorithm of the SGB and fabric on basis of those parameters it is going to build. But here we are just enabling the services. Okay. You not understand it still? Yes, actually, my question is, uh, is uh, what is the drawback of uh, GRE and what is the drawback of uh, IPC? So GRE, GRE is like I explained, GRE is like uh, it's not secure, but very much flexible, right? We can run the any protocol and all. Uh, IPC is very secure, but not flexible. Okay, what is a drawback, sir? Uh, in this, we, can, we, we can't use this kind of services. So uh, uh, in this IPsec, if you're building the IPsec tunnel, under the IPsec, you, can run, you cannot run the BGP. Under the IPsec, you cannot run the BGP or any dynamic routing protocol. This is a drawback. Okay. Under the IPsec. Okay. Under the IPsec. Uh, yeah, I, I know again. Thank you. You okay? Got it? Yeah, no, I got it. So thank you so much. Yeah. But over the BGP MPLS, you can run the IPsec. Understand? Yeah, Underlay understand. is your BGP OSPF, you can run the IPsec. Thank but you. If so you're much, running sir. the IPsec, yeah. 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 Thank you so okay. much. Now it's clear, sir. Okay. All right. All right. So the things I was discussing are the vSmart. So vSmart, he is having such kind of the configuration. So I'll go here in the VPN zero. And VPN zero, I'll go on the interface. ETH zero and that tunnel interface. Under we required the... any protocol, right? Under IPsec, we have any protocol with this HDMI. IPsec is alone a protocol. IPsec no is another. The... Okay, no need for the uh, branch to branch connectivity. Any protocol is required. Branch no, to nothing, branch connectivity. No, nothing protocol is going to require. IPsec not going to carry any protocol. Nah. I told nah, IPsec not supporting any protocol. But still we required, I think so. That's no, no, nothing is going to require. Nothing is going to require. Just understand this. Understand. The bad road you created, that can use the OSPF, BGP, 
MPLS, right? Or might be the static bad road. Once once on top of this bad road, you create the very good road, right? This is something is pure IPsec, right? So your underlay is no, never going to be, you know, visible to everyone. What you are using inside the bad road is not going to be visual. The good thing is IPsec is running. And it is going to carry the data from this, this location to this location. But if you're trying to run under the IPsec, anything like the BGP, OSPF, MPLS, it is not going to work. Unless you are just going to use the GRE again over this IPsec. So in our entire sd session, GRE is not going to use over the IPsec. Only IPsec alone is going to be used or GRE is alone going to be used. Okay, so no dynamic routing protocol is going to be used. I'll explain later uh, with the documentations. So you can understand. Okay, Ali. Okay, sir. Okay. So now I have to just do the configuration of this vSmart. So this vSmart uh, allows services and commits. So let me just show run. So this show run have done this configuration. Services has been allowed and the tunnel interface has been formed. Every configuration has been written here. You can see. So you can see in the V-bound also. Uh, sir, I have one question. Yes, please. Uh, if you want to use like a dynamic uh, and uh, we want also security purpose also. So uh, that time we have to use uh, like uh, IPsec under uh, GRE. Uh, yes, means not under together. Means if you want to use the dynamic routing protocols, so hmm. one concept, GRE over IPsec. GRE over IPsec. So what that means, GRE over IPsec. So you just have to build the IPsec and then means they both are working together. They both oh. are working together. So one is the flexible. So both having a problem, right? I have some kind of a strong area and you having a, some kind of a strong area, right? But I hmm. have some kind of drawback and you have also some kind of drawback. So if my drawback, is your strong area and my uh, drawback is like uh, your strong area. So together we can, you know, uh -huh. build that you know, gap. So this is the same thing they are going to do that. GRE having some drawback, the security was drawback in the GRE, right? So who give the security? IPsec. IPsec again, having a drawback, they're not supposed to dynamic routing protocol. So who is going to give the dynamic feature? That is a GRE. So yeah. they both feature is going to come together when you are going to use the GRE over IPsec. Oh. And I'm sure many of the engineers never understand this concept because they don't know. So it's very easy. But if you once know, your life will be always be happy because you're never going to be confused. This is the only problem. That's why they use always GRE over IPsec. If I ask this question in the interview, any one of the candidate, why basically use a GRE over IPsec? So sometimes they fail to explain. Some are, some are the good of the concept. They explain very well. But some are the fail to explain because they don't know. They just know GRE over IPsec or IPsec. Why not we can use alone IPsec? Why not we can use the GRE alone? Why we use it together like that? So if someone having the good understanding, then they can only explain. OK, so uh, I hope yes. it's clear. So yes. now, uh, yes. yeah, thank you. So now we having the lab guides for the vSmart also. So let me show you. So see, this lab guide also, every VPN zero interface configuration, you can see every device is having a similar configuration. You can see here, we want also, and the we manage also. So we done with this set of the configuration. System wise configuration is still we not done. Okay, so we'll do it later. Now we just have to bring this we manage up and working. So before I can go start bringing process, we just have to understand one of the component which we never discussed till now, that is a root CA, right? So we just have to understand what is a root CA. So let's say suppose I have one of the example. Root CA is something centralized authority, right? If I'm talking about centralized authority, that means one of the authority who is having the full responsibility to validate something validate the documentations right or docs whatever you want to do they are going to validate together so how this validation is going to be happen right so the basic example you can think about every indians or every every country citizens must they use the passport right so once you use the passport who is going to issue the passport passport is going to issue by the government of the india right 
and government of india is going to issue with the help of the passport authority and those passport is going to be valid across the world right and if you are going to fly any of the country from the india other country will uh, ask you the passport once you arrive there on the immigration process or might be you landed with the flight they will ask the passport can you show your passport so once you show the passport of the any of the country where you landed so they are going to validate the passport they are going to validate the passport how because they having a centralized database for india as well in their record so they know every database of the india what all passport they have in issue what is the unique number how can validate so their system is going to validate and once the system is going to validate they are going to allow you to just enter the country if the system is not allowed to validate they might be not allowed to enter the country so this is the one thing about the passport similar the every other country is also doing the same process and india also having the similar database so that means all authorized bodies across the globe so whatever the country we have they all sharing their passport database to each other so they know each other if anyone is coming from the different different countries they just have to use one of the mechanism one of the centralized repository database by checking those centralized repository database they will validate you are the right person or wrong person so this is an example similar thing is going to happen in the sd wan like to just validate the sd wan devices we just have to use some kind of certificate we just have to use some kind of certificate so who is going to issue those certificate who is going to issue those certificate if the certificate is not same for this device and this device and not as per your organization or as per your authorization which is going to be issue the certificate then they are not going to allow to talk they are just going to break the communication so they must this person have the unique certificate from this body also this also having a unique certificate from this body so root c is something which is a centralized body or centralized authority who having the right to issue the certificate issue the certificate to whom they are going to issue certificate for the v smart v bond and v manage right or even the vhs and if the v manage is going to carry the same certificate or the same organization based certificate or same authorization based certificate and if the v age is also coming with the same certificate they are going to talk if the certificate is not going to match then they are not going to talk so to use the certificate for the validation purpose the root ca is going to use so in the sd wan if you are having uh, like uh, live setup might be you don't have to use the root ca you don't have to use the root ca then how the validation is going to happen so let me just go and explain a little bit theoretical steps so we having that some kind of the technology deep drive so there is a zero trust fabric this is the concept you just have to understand so what that means the zero trust fabric so any of the router if you are going to purchase from the webtela they come with come with with uh, two combination one is the chesi id one another is a certificate serial number so this is the uniqueness going to you know provided by the webtela whenever you purchase any of the boxes two things must be there one is the cisco chesi number and one is the certificate serial number so same certificate serial number it was issued by the some cisco root ca that is you can say root chan or root ca or if you are not going to use the cisco one then you just have to use some third party root ca who is going to issue this certificate serial number and chesi number to your devices because without certificate and chesi number it cannot be validated because the unique of the certificate and unique of the chesi number should be match across of the fabric should be the same organization so every box should have these two particular parameters chesi id and certificate serial number once you have certificate serial number and chesi id then what next so the next thing the certificate what you having in the box that are installed in the one of the temper proof module there is one chip set available in the hardware these all are talking about the hardware they are going to install inside of the tpm chip so if 
anyone is going to be manipulate or they just try to hack those certificate or they try to temper those certificate the certificate is going to be destroyed so this is how the tpm chip is going to be come in a picture and that come with the every routers whenever you buy from the cisco right so by using those uh, tpm chip the certificate is going to Installed, stored, and this is something is going to happen during the installation process or the manufacturing process. Means that box is going to be manufactured during that time. This certificate is going to be stored, right? So it's not like that. It is something after the manufacturing or something going to be externally like added on the box. No, and the certificate that is going to be stored here that is signed by the Evnet. So Evnet is again a root CS, centralized authority. Likewise, the passport authority, Evnet is again a centralized authority who is going to issue the certificate. And based on the certificate issuance, the certificate is going to be signed by the your Evnet. So Evnet will sign the certificate. And after signing the certificate, that is going to be process and manufacture and store inside of the your box. So you can see. And this is the trusted by the control plane element. So that means the certificate which is going to sign and that is going to be stored in the VA, that is also trusted by the control plane element. That means it, whenever the certificate, this box is going to come and say, I have this certificate, can you just check? So they will say, yes, you are the valid one because already we having a database for you. So this is certificate is going to be installed. Let me see there's noise. So what next? So after this, this certificate is going to be signed by the trusted root CA. And we having another root CA that is a semantic root CA. So if you not want to use this particular uh, signed certificate, which is a trusted root CA, you can also use that, you know, semantic root CA that is going to use to validate the control plane element that is going to use to validate the control plane element. So also we need to validate the control plane element. So that is going to validate by the semantic root CA. And if you want to use, if you don't want to use the semantic root CA, we having the alternative of enterprise root CA that each can be used to validate the control plane element, right? So this is the option we are using. We are not using this one, semantic one, not we are using the Evnet one, right? We are using the enterprise root CA of the third like option just to validate our control pin. So in my lab, we are using this root CA as an enterprise root CA. So this is something a third party, but still they having a like authority to just give that, you know, certificate and that certificate going to be installed in the boxes. So this is the, about the root CA. Any question why you use? Yeah, I have one question actually. Uh, see, uh, usually in a real time scenario, uh, what will happen? Uh, will will put the like uh, enterprise CA or uh, default root server? So, if you talk about the in the production scenario, if you're taking the services from Cisco, that services is by default going to come from the uh, Cisco itself, no need to worry about that. Okay, you no need to go and install the enterprise root C and all, right? So they having the PNP portal, JTB portal, and that is going to by default integrated there, and it is just going to serve your purpose. No additional services, no additional kind of the enterprise root C is going to be required. This is like what the live scenario is going to be happen. But we are in the lab, or might be if you want to use some kind of third party root C, then you can use that also. But yes, okay, production. Case, no. Okay. Yeah. One more. Uh, see, one more. Player. This one. In case we. Uh, in case this one. Uh, we want. Uh, this one on-prem uh, cloud. Okay. Uh, on-prem uh, or all three. Uh, whatever the controller. So in this case, what will happen? Uh, we'll have to install locally. Th this one root CA or enterprise uh, root CA or uh, again you can do the same on Cisco or Cisco portal. portal. So uh, if you want to install locally root CA, it is absolutely possible because you are uh, using the on-prem. So your root CA should be the on-prem also, right? But in case you not want to use the on-prem root CA and you want to get some third party root CA certificate, like with a different, different vendor keep providing chargeable certificates, Cisco also provide that. 
So you can get the certificate from there and install on your uh, systems, like the system means the controllers or the edge devices, that is also going to work. But if you want to install the root CA locally, that is also going to work either way. But you just have to get the certificate from someone and that certificate should be installed in these devices. Okay, uh, see, uh, let's consider we have a one VH, okay, that is a new VH. And mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, on-prem setup and we are putting uh, on-prem uh, root CA server. So, uh, mm -hmm. so how uh, this one, uh, do, we, uh, do we require to install the, our, this one, what do you call, certificate in uh, VH no, 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 say, manually? See, say, uh, yes, manually, that all certification is going to happen manually. If if you are not having a Cisco portal, where is the every, everything is in the cloud, where everything is going to happen in the automatic, if you are going to use the your uh, on premises right on premises you are going to use so you just have to use one of the root ca who having a responsibility to issue the certificate issue the certificate and that certificate need to install manually on the devices which i am going to show right away i'll issue okay. the certificate from the root ca and they that all are going to install in this particular devices so we just have to see how the root CA should be configuration. I will do the root CA configuration. So there's a root CA configuration, how the root CA is going to be configured. Once the root CA is going to be configured, we'll see how the certificate is going to be generated. Once the certificate will generated, we'll get the certificate from the FTP server. And we need to transfer this certificate to the controller like the vManage. So once the certificate is transferred from the uh, this device to this device, we need to install it. So all process we have to do. So these are all manual process. But if you having the Cisco license and Cisco controllers, these all step is going to be null and void. It will be automatically going to happen. So we don't have to learn this. But this is something because we added in our course module because you should know how the things is going to work in the brain, right? And how brain is going to be, you know, work in the Cisco engine fabric. So this is critical things we just have to understand. Okay, Kundan. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. So where I was, I was talking about something about the certificate. Yes, anyone else having a certification, uh, like uh, confusion, like why certification is going to require and what is the concept, anything? If not, we can discuss later on also because there is no problem. Uh, let me just start doing some kind of the configuration of the root CA. So first thing before getting the certification, we just have to configure this root CA because if I start doing the configuration of the vManage, this vManage is not configured. So we, the zero day configuration of the vManage is going to happen here in the settings. So I have to go in the settings and after going in the settings, we just have to do configuration. The first thing they are asking about the organization name. So I can use the very unique organization name and that should be like uh, unique through all the devices. It cannot be changed. My organization should be the same and should be uh, same configuration for the, all of the devices like the VS, vManage, vSmart and vWant. So let's say suppose I'm just going to organization name as a lab. So this is my lab organization name. Someone can take the any of the organization name, likewise the your organization could be the SCL, your organization could be the, what can say Vipro, maybe the other, any other company, what, where you're working. So here I'm just dealing with the lab, so I can use the lab, or maybe I can use the, like, Guinet lab, anything I can use. Let me make simple lab, because the lab guide is created to, uh, as per the lab, so I just use the lab. So after this lab, I just save it. So this is the first step you have to do. And these all the steps are written here. Let me show you. So if you forget, so see here, you just have to go. Uh, this is, you have to do some steps. So either of the step you can do first, you can copy the certificate and all, and then you can go. So certification will do later on, but we just can go and do the lab and lab, okay? So once lab and lab I'll do, the next step it is going to ask, what is my V-bond detail, okay? So vbond detail, we just have to configure the vbond IP address. So what is my vbond IP address? So the vbond IP address is 123.10.10.11. So this is the IP address, which is physically configured on the vbond. That IP address, I need to put it here. So I'll just go there and I'll just put 
10.10.11. By default, it used the port that is a one, two, three, four, six. So no need to change it. Now, two things we filled the organization name and we want email notification. If I want anything, I can put it here. I can leave it. Hardware when edge certificate authorization, uh, I don't want to use. Now we having the option controller certificate authorizations. So you can see this is the important part. And for this, we just have to choose whether Cisco automated. So this was like when you purchase the Cisco same thing, Cisco controller and all. So they will do the automated. No need to worry about that, right? So everything is going to happen automatically. Your certificate is going to sync with the Cisco portal. No need to do anything. They Second one is Symantec one, right? So the second one, one, if you want to use Symantec one, you can use the Symantec one also. So we are not going to use Symantec one because we don't have Symantec one also uh, license. Third one is a manual. So if you're having the manual licensing you want to do, you can just do it manually. Third one, uh, like last one is the enterprise root CA, which is the most common for the lab testing. So we are going to use the enterprise root CA. So this is the enterprise root CA that, we, that is going to belong to my organization. And based on this organization, I just have to use the like configuration of the root CA. So how this is going to work? So they are asking for the certificate. So how I'll get the certificate? I don't have any certificate, okay? So first I need to go and root CA and I have to configure the root CA. And after configuring the root CA, I just have to generate the certificate. Then I will use the certificate to just copy and paste here. Okay, so let's start from the root CA. So that's why when we do the lab, you just start from here. Let me just go there. So where is root CA? So you can see in the lab guide itself, this is step are mentioned here. So before you do these steps, you just have to configure this uh, root CA configuration. So here you just have to do root CA configuration. So every steps are written here. So you just have to go in the root CA. Let me just go. And this is my root CA. And after going in this root CA, sorry. Okay, I just no logs would be visible. Uh, so just make it. So first thing you just have to do based on this configuration, you just have to use this command line and configure it. No need to understand how this root CH is going to configure. What is the meaning of command? It's not part of the syllabus. I'm not going to focus too much. What that means, you just have to follow the script and you just have to run. See, hostname already have done, so I can just run this command by using this copy and paste. So let me. Just go there. I can just paste it here and I just put 2048. After this, it is going to generate the RSA key. Okay. So your RSA key has been generated. Then you just have to use this IP HTTP server. So this command you just need to define. And then you just have to use this command like crypto PKI. So this is a command and you just have to name any name you can give. So after this, it will ask the name. So I use the PKI name. This is my certificate name. And where you want to store this certificate database. So this is under the NVRAM, my router NVRAM. So I can just use that under my router NVRAM. So I can just use this, my database. So this is my NVRAM and then it is a database, complete database. Now it is asking who is the issuer of the certificate. So you just have to use the lab. So this is my organization name, okay? So root ca.lab. So exactly the organization name should be there. So I can use this one and I can use, let me just copy and paste this all. So I can just go and just paste it. That's why I put this lab. So, okay. So you can see some server setting cannot be changed after the CA certificate generation, certificate server enabled. So once I did all command certificate server enable. So I'll come back again out from here and then after I'll run this command. So whatever certificate I have, I want to export in my NVRAM, okay? So certificate will generate it. This PK certificate will generate it. And I want to put in my NVRAM. You can put in the flash in system anywhere or you having the any USB drive, you can also put there. 
So I'll put in the NVRAM and see this certificate has been exported. And uh, what is destination file name? So I, I just use this pki.c and I press enter and this certificate has been copied. So once your certificate has been copied, you just have to make device as a FTP server, TFTP server. So other device will copy the certificate from there. There. So you just have to enable the services that is a TFTP server. So you just have to enable the TFTP feature on the router. And after enabling the TFTP server feature, this certificate is going to install in the TFTP server. So you just have to run the command dir, or you can let me just dir, and I just use the this command and you can see there is a certificate this certificate and if i running the more command and this one uh more and i just use this uh, nvram and then this certificate name so you can see this is my certificate which is available in the my router in the root ca and this certificate is going to use entire of the fabric to just, you know, validate the devices, right? So how it is going to happen? So my certificate has been used now and this is available here. So what I have to do, basically I have to copy this certificate on this vManage, right? Whatever certificate I use. So you can see in the lab guide also, if you go there, so, Once you did this certificate stuff, right? You just have to go and copy this. And before that also, you just have to do, what you have to do? You just have to go in the vManage, right? And the same certificate that you generated here, the same certificate, whatever you generated on this particular device, this need to be transferred through the FTP on this vManage. And once this transfer is going to happen, this certificate needs to install in the vManage. Once this certificate is going to be installed here, then it is going to use the private public key. And once you put the certificate on the GUI format, it is going to work you and it is going to support you. So to transfer the certificate, the first pre prerequisite, you should be able to ping this root CA. So root CA is already there. We have tested it. Let me just test it again. So if I'm pinging that 123.10.10.13, see it is reachable. And now we already make this certificate server as a TFTP server also. And under the TFTP, we just put it the you know certificate information. So now we just have to copy it. So how can I copy this? So to copy this, you just have to go in the vSale Linux command. So you just have to go on the vManage. And after man vManage, you just have to go in the vSale. Little bit complex process, but this is the one-time process. You just have to understand later process will be the very easy. Okay. So you just have to go in the vSale. After going the vSale, this is the Linux TFTP command, right? So you just have to copy this TFTP command and you just have to use it here. And once you've done, the certificate will be copied from your server. If this command is going to run, your certificate will be the copy, but how you can validate? So you just have to run ls minus L and it will show this certificate has been copied, right? And once also, when you do the copy, this root CA will show some log, but you just have to enable debug TFTP, right? Events, right? Or TFTP packets. So let me just see, show log. If I'm showing, there is no log, right? Right now. But once again, I'll do the copy. Let me show you. See, so this is going to trigger some log. Let me show you. See, this log has been triggered. You're sending some files, receiving some file acknowledgement allows. That means the TFTP complete the transfer process. And you can verify the logs also in the debug format, right? So I can unstop debug all. And if uh, you're not seeing the logs after enabling a debug, that means your certificate not copying and you also get some kind of timeout process. So my certificate has been copied. And if you see the certificate information, right? I'll again exit from here. And after exit, I need to install this certificate. So you just have to run this command request. The certificate, you just copied it. You just have to install root search chan install and directory. You just have to use the home admin and the certificate name should be the same, which is just copied. So your certificate name would be the pki.ca. This is certificate. 
so you just have to install and see your certificate has been installed certificate successfully right so show certificate installed if you check that there is no certificate installed showing right now because it's not validated still right so so certificate uh, root search if you see that this is certificate it is in directory just used to validate based on the private and public key and if you see this is certificate issuer is a root ca and lab dot local the same certificate we just issued and it is showing in here in the issuer list also so the first step let me summarize we just enable this root ca we generate the certificate under the root ca we make this root ca as a tftp server and we transfer the same certificate to the vmanage we need to transfer the same certificate to the v bond we need to transfer the same certificate to v smart okay so let me just do for other also so i'll go in the v v bond also so i'll go here and i'll go here and again i'll go in the v shell right and the same command what command i have to use this one so the same command i have just to use let me just show you this one tftp one exactly the same and see ls minus l this certificate has been copy and i just have to install the same thing so you just have to do every boxes so i'll just go there and i just uh, uh, pki dot ca so it is going to install the v bond also install the certificate every device need even your v edges is also going to require so v smart i have to go in the v smart admin admin you just have to go in the v cell tftp tftp minus g minus r right and then ip address pki dot ca this is certificate uh sorry i believe uh 13 right oh okay syntax is wrong let me just use the correct sentence syntax so we just have to use this for pki first and then we just have to use so now it's done and ls minus l and once you're done c certificate is there so we just have to install this certificate so you just have to use this command to install the certificate we just have to exit from here because we are in the cell mode so we just have to exit and then we just have to install so now my certificate has been installed on the three of the devices so every devices have now certificate my v manage have certificate my v bond have certificate my v smart having a certificate okay so after doing this all we done with the cli then we just have to move with the gui process so what gui process is saying so once we done this certificate install is we just have to go in the v manage gui and perform the below step from the administration and setting so few of the step already done that lab and the v bond but now we just have to take this certificate right so how this certificate will get how this certificate will get okay so this certificate is going to get based on the certificate which is installed on your like uh root ca right so in the root ca if you see in the root ca we can run this command like you just have to run this uh, command if you go in the configuration t and if you run this command your certificate will be show whatever certificate you just generated and even you don't want to use this command and you want to see your certificate just you have to use this command like you just go in the dir or uh, dir you just use the option right and we ram and uh, you can just show the more and we ram and this and then you put in the certificate see this is ending with a4 dv and the same thing you are getting from ad for the same certificate we have so you can just use this certificate and after using this certificate you just have to copy this certificate on the gui of the vmanage you put it this certificate in the cli also in the search and directory and also you just have to put for the gui also because you just have to use the same certificate so how can i do that so for that we just have to use the gmail we just have to use the internet process right 
So let me just use the Gmail. So Gmail, I can use going at Okay, let me check is it correct one or not. Let me see. So I believe we are logging here and if I go in the Gmail, so we can use this Gmail. So that's why this is going to use. So again, we just have to go on the PC, this PC and also on this PC internet should be must. So I can open the Gmail from here also gmail.com because we need to transfer the certificate we cannot direct copy and paste copy paste is not going to work on this uh, virtual machine from the pc whatever the copy we are doing from the virtual machine it is going to stay in the virtual machine only so we just have to use some internet based transfer so i can use the doing it technology right and again i use login it here At least we can try to onboard one controller today. So let me just approve it. It's done. So we are good. Gmail setup has been done. So what next? So the certificate, whatever we have in this particular root CA, we need to copy this certificate. Make sure no space should be missed from here to here no extra space should be there and no any single line should be or single character should be missed okay so you just copy it after copying it just go in the gmail let me just go on the gmail and i'll just uh, compose it here and i'll just send it to go in it so i will send it here and i'll just Send so on the same email. So this will reach to the my this browser. So let me just check it here. So probably I'll get the email. See, this certificate has been received here. So I'll copy this certificate carefully. And after copying this certificate, it is one dot is missing. So I'll copy this certificate here. And I will go there and I'll put this certificate here. See, this copy and paste has been done. If you're not going to do this copy paste is not going to work for you. So this is how the copy paste is going to work. Now it is asking you want to set the certificate signing request properties. So I will discuss what is certificate signing request. So it is something like your device will set a certificate signing request property based on few parameters. So what is that based on the domain? So what is the domain? That is a lab, right? A lab. Uh, your domain is lab dot local so you can see here you can find it here after doing this all um, let me show uh, where you'll get that so here you can see your domain is lab dot local it is written here and certificate has been copied this side you have to select and then you just have to use the lab ct whatever you want to use you can use organization name is a lab it is going to stay lab, 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 both, right? Next is you just have to use the city. Might be I'm in New Delhi, so I can use the New Delhi state. Might be the Delhi again, right? And uh, what else? Validity of this uh, controller, I uh, means email. I can use the GUI net technology, right? At the Gmail, or better, I can use info at the rate right 
country name i can use the india validation i can select one year or three year of the certificate and then i'll just use the certificates import once i'll do my certificate has been imported so you can see my certificate has been finally imported which take few steps but my certificate has been in, imported you can see this is my certificate based on this certificate now validation is going to be happen right so how validation is going to happen let's understand so certificate will be used this steps is written and we just installed there now once the certificate is going to be installed you just have to go in the v manage and you just have to go in the certificate section after going in certificate section you just have to go in the controller and this is your v bond you can see here and in this v bond you can see the certificate need to generate the csr so what you have to do you just have to select here and you can click here the view the csr there is no csr available means certificate signing request not done right so how the certificate signing request is going to done so whatever the certificate you just install in this particular device based on that certificate and based on the parameter they are going to generate the certificate signing request and once you generate this certificate signing request this certificate is going to again revalidate with the root ca and if the root ca ca is able to validate and give you the final certificate which need to install which is going to make you the final step so still we have to do two steps so we just have to generate the certificate right so this certificate has been generated right so you can see certificate signing request has been generated so we get the certificate request right so now we having this certificate so this certificate need to be whatever certificate is generated we need to copy it and we just have to see csr generated once csr generated you just copy this certificate and send to the root ca to just sign it based on the parameter means the validate and give you the final certificate so i'll send it i have done from there now you can see here in the lab document also copy and paste the web certificate and get this signed with the root ca so we just have to get this signed with the root ca so i need to come with my gmail and probably i'll get the new certificate so see here is a new certificate i'll get it zero minutes i'll just copy it before copy it we just have to run one command on the root ca which command and how it is going to run let me show you so you just have to go and run this command you just have to run this signing the certificate you just run to this command on this particular root ca it is complicated but everything is written document and you just have to follow me on the video it is going to happen very you know clear so once you put this command now you just have to copy the certificate to get them signed so i'll just copy the certificate and make sure no error no extra dot and you just have to put uh, like this you have to put there once you done you just have to put enter you just have to need write a quit once you write the quit you will get the final certificate that is a granted certificate you can see here so now this final certificate you need to copy it here again and just let me send to again email so my final certificate has been copied and i send it now i need final certificate to get this signed so let me just go there and let me just see so there is third mail zero minute so i'll copy this final certificate this is my final certificate and after this doing this final certificate let me sure nothing is going to be so i'll copy this after copy you just have to go and make sure you select this csr it should be the yellow color and you just have to go in the install certificate and this is the final certificate is going to be installed so if everything is going to find or okay this certificate is going to install if anything is going to be error this is going to throw out the error so let me just install it and now you can see certificate is getting installed and it is in progress same your certificate has been fully signed and successfully so now if you see here in certificate in the controller now you can see your first step certificate added to device they generated the csr and you get this sign the certificate and update the certificate so everything is signed and this is ready to 
provide the service. And you can see this certificate having now serial number, certificate serial number, and the unique device ID also will get some after some time. And after this, if I am going to the V bond, you can see the invalid word has been removed. Earlier it was showing the invalid. There was no certification now, but it's valid. There is no error. So we are done with the certificate signing request and certificate installation request for the vManage, right? Cisco provide the certificate. Yes, once you purchase the services from Cisco, no, they will give the you know everything as per the you know contract. So they will nothing is free. The everything will be chargeable, but they will include it on their SD WAN fabric chargeable, uh, controller chargeable, whatever they are going to give. That is going to include by default on those charges. No extra charges, but yes, definitely it is like already in package. No, 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 you no need to do the same thing. Even you not get a chance to configure that, you know, uh, these all control in the live environment. It is only in the lab I'm explaining, but in the live, it is not possible because it is going to one time build by your architect or might be a Cisco for you, your organization. And once it is going to build, no need to do anything for you. Okay, Alim. So this one thing we have done for the uh, we manage point of view. Okay, similar step we just have to do for the other devices also, right? So you can see everything is written here. We just have to copy the certificate, get that sign with the root CA, but after signing, you just have to quit, hit enter, get the granted certificate. You just go and install here. See, it is written here and copy and paste the below like that, right? And after that, all good. So we are done with this particular lab guide. We not have to do anything. But one thing we just have to do in this particular we manage the top one, the system wise configuration. System wise configuration, we not completed it. So, so let's so come in real time. How we will do? Can you tell me about us brief in real time? How we do? Real time, you know, to do anything. Real time, nothing you have to do. Everything is going to happen automatically. In real time, even we don't realize to do the, the all the steps, it is going to happen automatically. How? Because I told na in in the certification part, you just have to uh, your organization might be having this kind of the automated way, Cisco one certification. So once you purchase the devices, they use the Cisco automated. This is recommended. You can see even the recommended. So everything is going to happen like once you purchase the devices, they are going to put their certificate and the serial device number on the PNP portal, right? Cisco smart account. There is a concept Cisco smart account, right? This Cisco smart account in the we manage are going to sync together. You just have to click sync smart account. So a smart account is going to be sync. That is your PNP portal, a ZTP portal. So your all certificate, all serial number will be there. And thus everything is going to sync in these devices. So they will do already in sync. So no need to do anything. They having the certificate information. They having the serial numbers. They having the private public key. So they keep doing the automatic process. Yeah, so this is also. Yeah. VHS also. So yes, we is also going to be. You know, you have to just upload the VS list, and that once you upload the VS list, they are just going to come with the serial and chassis number. And once you include the Cisco smart account, this is also going to be synced with the, let me show you how it is going to happen. Uh, this was something I was just wanted to talk in the later stage, but let me just little bit put an idea. So when JTB process is going to happen, you'll get such kind of the software.cisco.com kind of the platform, right? So this is actually your smart portal. This we call the JTB process or plugin in play portal, right? So on this plugin po play portal or JTB portal, you just have to, you know, assign the uh, different different credential for the, your organization. And once you purchase the devices, you just have to add those devices here. Whatever the serial number, it is the real things I have just exported from the company organization, right? So whatever the serial number, you just have to add it here. Let me just show you. So this kind of the serial number and like VH, what is the serial number? What type of the device is? You can just go and add it here. Once you'll add it here, software central portal, serial number and device, you can see serial number and device ID, everything is there. And that are the physical or the hardware devices, whatever we have, 
they already having the certificate installed in their brain. So this is going to sync with the vSmart portal, uh, like vSmart Cisco Smart portal. Once you just sync, while syncing, this vManage should be reachable to the PNP portal via the public IP address. So might be your PNP is hosted here, and this is the vManage. So they can talk to each other via the public IP address. Once they talk, your all information is going to sync here. So the controller is going to validate it based on the whatever the serial key and certificate installed there. But in case you are talking about the vManage, uh, sorry, vAs devices, that should be installed by here by uploading the vanage list. And once you upload, the all serial number, chassis number is going to become again here. And this is going to validate automatically. No need to do anything. So this is quite a straightforward process. Alim, okay, making sir, it you. sense. Yeah, yes, making sir. it sense, right? Yes, sir. So even if you're doing in the you know real world, even you don't get that much opportunity to get knowledge about these things. Okay, so last thing we just have to do uh, uh, that is uh, system IP configuration. So how system IP configuration is going to happen? The five tuple information. So what is the five tuple information? So based on that five tuple information, we just have to configure the organization name, system IP we want, but few of the detail already might be available. So if I am running the configuration show run system, you can run this command. So you can see out of the five information lab is already taken, but there's no vbond information. There is no vmanage information. The host name is not there. Site ID is not there. Only one information is there, organization name. Because why it is showing? Because on the GUI, we put it in this information. This GUI, while doing the configuration, we put it this information as a lab organization name. So this is showing here. So just four things need to be configured. So let me just configure it. I'll go in the host name. Uh, system wise configuration. Here I'll put the host name. Host name should be vManage. This is my host name. Let me just go in the topology. So this is my host name. After going in the host name, what is my site ID? So you can see site ID is a, we'll discuss later what is site ID, but for time being, we just understand we need to configure the, every device should be have one site ID. Site ID is 100. And uh, what is the V bond? So V bond is this IP address 123.10.11. So we just have to put 123.10.11. This is three tuple we done. And the fourth one is a system IP address. System IP address is this IP address 10.123.10.11. 10 10 10 so this is my system IP address, and then we just commit. So now we're done with the system wise configuration as well. So you can see now I have this particular system wise configuration. This is the mandatory. You just have to have do this configuration. Even you are just trying to onboard any of the devices. Minimum configurations so is host name, the first thing. System IP, the second thing, third IP, third uh, tuple is like site ID, fourth is like uh, organization name, and fifth is the V1. So this we just have to do. So we're done with this particular device. Similarly, if I want to onboard the uh, system IP, I think you were given wrong. I think oh, we sorry, managed. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I, I also realized it should be this IP address, 10.123. I make it wrong. Sorry for that. Yeah, yeah. System IP should be changed. No, it's right. System IP is right. See, now this is the same IP address now given. See, this is something but different. This is V manage, sir. Actually, configuration V manage. You are giving the V bond IP, V bond system IP. Oh, oh, sorry. Should be ten. Should be ten. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, right, right, right. Should be ten should be 10 okay thanks for it will keep creating problem in the future if i <laughs> not realize my so system let me just check it now it's okay 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 everything is fine okay so now we are done so we're done with the v manage configuration uh after this v manage uh, onboarding we just have to onboard the v smart also yeah we want also so you want to continue guys today or we can continue tomorrow it's like too much for today, I believe, right? So we can start fresh tomorrow. What do you think? Okay, tomorrow, but uh, we will get today lab. Actually. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm just going to arrange you all lab access. Okay, so you can test it. Okay, when, if you're not. 
uh, within uh, one or two hour let me just talk okay okay thank you okay guys so what we can do uh, i believe we have done a lot of discussion today okay so in tomorrow session we'll try to onboard rest of the controller i'll go with the uh, some major key things right which is still not covered because we just discussed a lot of like uh, overviews and some certification part but a lot of things we have to go in the very deep so i'll try to explain tomorrow class okay so try to join on time okay and we'll try to complete these all things okay all right so thank you so much guys i believe i believe you all having the great learning today see you again in tomorrow class bye bye take care yes sir thank you sir